So now I suppose that each one of us is compatible with the vector representation of complex number. We have seen addition and multiplication of complex number and we have left division and, subtract, uh, division and subtraction as an exercise for you. Now when I am representing complex number as when I was representing complex number as vectors something strike into my mind. The way we have real number and we represent them on a complex number we even say that sometimes a set of complex number forms a locus of point which, satis which satisfies which shares some common property. For example, if you are on this 2D plane, I have a circle. In case of real number, I used to say that the circle has a property or is a locus of point such that its distance from a, the center is always same. Similarly, we had ellipse, hyperbola, parallel, or in that case, even a straight line. So, when complex number, when real numbers could be represented on a 2D plane, we could find the locus of two points. Once again, what I'm, what I want to convey is, when we were representing real number on 2D plane, we were able to find locus of points related to the real numbers, and we could even derive equations representing this locus of point, like circle. Ellipse, hyperbola, parabola, etc., etc. Now, the way we have seen the way we represent real number, we can even represent complex number on 2D plane. So, what I can, what the idea which comes into my mind is the way we have equation for representing the locus of points for real numbers. Similarly, we can even define equations for representing locus of points for complex number. Isn't that so? Because everything is same, the, so the way we are representing real number, we are even representing complex number. So the way there exists a locus for real number, I think there even should exist locus of points for complex number. So let us try to define that even. So let us go back to the point where we started the vector representation of complex number. I again start by drawing an argon plane where I was having a point P representing a complex number Z1. Let me draw a straight line here, in fact all the lines straight here. So what I was having, I was having a plane, real axis, imaginary axis. This was a point P here which was representing a complex number Z1. And this was a point Q here which was representing the complex number Z2. And we said we can always define PQ as Z1 minus Z2. Now in this case my uh, these two and um, these two vectors O P and O Q are intersecting at the origin, and if this angle is theta one and this angle is theta two, I could say that this angle is theta one minus theta two. Now, what I want to find next is a what if this complex number and uh, 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 intersect at some point on this argument, some arbitrary point on this plane. And I want to find the angle between these two vectors. So till now we saw how we can represent addition and multiplication of two complex numbers on argon plane. And we have left uh, the division, the representation of division and subtraction as an exercise for you all. Now one more thing which strike it to my mind when I was representing complex numbers on this argon plane. What I saw was, what I observed was. I am representing my complex numbers on the argon plane. Similarly, the way I used to represent real numbers on the argon plane. So, in case of real numbers, we always had a set of real numbers which, which shared some common properties or which defined the locus of some point. For example, we had a circle in case of real numbers such that which, such that a which was a locus of point such that its distance from the center is always equal. 
Similarly, we had ellipse, parabola, hyperbola. In that case, even a straight line. Now, the way, the way we had points sharing some common properties or uh, representing a locus of point in case of real numbers, we can even have such locus of points in case of complex number because the idea is still the same. The way we were representing real numbers with x and y coordinates, we are representing complex number with real coordinates and imaginary coordinates. Rest all the thing is same. So, the way we used to define locus of points for real numbers, we can even define locus of point in case of complex number which in case we have it we have here. So, the next topic that we are going to start with is how we can find locus of points in case of complex number. We have studied a complete topic of coordinate geometry to find the locus of points for real number. Now the next topic which we are going to start for start is we are going to find locus of points for complex numbers. So let us start. Suppose I am starting by again drawing the argon plane. We had already seen that if we have point P and point Q, P representing complex number Z1. and q representing z2 then we can represent pq by z1 minus z2 this we all are comfortable with so the next thing which i want to find in that in the previous case we saw that the op and o that op and oq were intersecting at the origin pq these two vectors were intersecting at the origin and this angle OPOQ we could define as theta 1 minus theta 2. I suppose everyone is clear with this one. So, the next topic which we are going to find star which is that we have to derive a general equation to find angle between any two intersecting lines. So, what we have to find is we have to find angle between two intersecting lines. Let us I will try to first represent that with the help of the argon diagram. For example, I have three non collinear points Z1, P, Q, R, P representing complex number Z1, R representing complex number Z2, and Q representing a complex number Z. I have a line PQ. And I have a line QR and there is an angle theta between these two. So, if this angle is theta 1, this angle, if this angle is theta 1 and this angle is theta 2, we have to find this angle theta. So, let us start. We know that PQ can be represented by the vector Z minus Z1. OQ can be represented by vector Z minus Z2. Okay. The angle POQ would be equals to theta 1 minus theta 2 which would be equal to what is theta 1 argument of z minus z 1 and what is theta 2 argument of z minus z 2. The sign can say that angle P O Q I can as argument of z minus z 1 minus argument of z minus z 2. Thus, we have is that angle P O Q is equal to argument of z minus z 1 minus argument of z minus z 2 which is nothing but equal to argument of z minus z 1 upon z minus z 2. 
because we always always know that argument of a minus argument of b is equals to argument of a by b now if i want to represent this vector z minus z1 upon z minus z2 i can represent this as mod in the form of r into e to the power iota theta i can always represent this as mod of z minus z1 upon mod of z minus z2 into e to the power iota theta where theta is the argument of z minus z1 upon z minus z2 which we have seen is equals to angle poq which is equals to theta once again what i have written here is i wanted to for i have written z minus z1 upon z minus z2 in the form of r into e to the power iota theta so in that case r would be the modulus of this thing and theta is the argument of this complex number which we have seen from here this argument is nothing but the angle poq which in this case is theta this represent equation is even termed as hunai method it's not a very commonly used term this is just i've read added it in some books i'm sharing this with you even and whenever we'll use this equation in solving some problem i'll always refer to this one as konai method now let us see one question based upon this so that we can see how we can apply the equation do you want me to keep this diagram or erase this i think it's um, i think everyone will be comfortable even if i erase this so let us rub this one and solve the question solve one question based on it so that we can understand the application of this complete method and we can even understand what we are basically trying to solve i know this all is all in terms of z z1 z2 so we are not going uh, not able to pictorially represent it or really imagine it in terms of 2d plane i think this question will help us in so uh, it'll help us in understanding the topic better so what we had derived till now was that z minus z1 upon z minus z2 is equals to mod of z minus z1 upon z minus z2 into e to the power iota theta where theta is the angle between z z the vector z z1 and vector z z2 now let us see one question based upon this so the question which you have to solve is that if z1 z2 z3 are the vertices of an isosceles the right angle triangle at c so we have z1 z2 and z3 are vertices of isosceles triangle which is right angled at c then what we have to do is we have to find the we have to prove that z1 minus z2 whole square is equals to twice of z1 minus z3 into z3 minus z2 and we are even given a diagram with this it says that this is a b c a is representing z1 b is representing z2 and c is representing z3 i am repeating the question once again we are given that z1 z2 z3 are the vertices of an isosceles triangle right angle triangle which is right angle at c and we have to prove this equation that is z1 minus z2 whole square is equals to twice of z1 minus z3 into z3 minus z2 so let us start solving this question we know that this angle is 90 degree and ac is equals to bc 
Now let us try to apply this equation here. So I know that the if I consider this vector z1 minus z3 upon z2 minus z3 then the angle between these two lines is 90 degree. Once again if I consider this vector z1 minus z3 upon z2 minus z3 I know that for this the angle between these two lines is 90 degree. So if I write start writing z2 minus z3 sorry z1 minus z3 upon z2 minus z3 or maybe z2 minus z3 upon z1 minus z3 doesn't matter if I write z1 minus z3 upon z2 minus z3 I can represent this as mod of z1 minus z3 upon z2 minus z3 into e to the power iota alpha where alpha that is the angle between z1 minus z2 and z2 minus z3 is 90 degree. So I can write this as e to the power iota pi by 2 since this is a right angle triangle so we know that the angle between these two lines is 90 degree. Now I can always raise mod of a by b as mod of a upon mod of b. So I can write this as z1 minus z3 upon z2 minus z3 into the e to the power iota pi by 2. I know z1 minus z3 is equal to z1 minus z2. So what we get here is 1 because these two mods are equal into e to the power iota pi by 2. Now e to the power iota pi by 2 is what? Cos of pi by 2 plus iota sin pi by 2. Cos of pi by 2 is 0, sin of pi by 2 is 1. So I can write e to the power iota pi by 2 as iota. So what I am writing here is z1 minus z3 is equals to iota times z2 minus z3. I am squaring on both sides. What we get here is z1 square plus z3 square minus twice of z1 z3 is equals to minus 1 because add a square is minus 1 z2 square plus z3 square plus twice z2 z3. I am taking z2 here because what we have to find is z1 minus z2 whole square. So what I am getting here is z1 square plus z2 square and here what I have is minus z3 minus 2 z3 square minus 2 z2 z3 and plus 2 z1 z3. I am adding minus 2 z1 z2 on both the sides because I want this term on the LHS that is z1 minus z2 whole square. So what I get here this term boils down to z1 minus z2 whole square and this term is equal to twice z1 minus z3 into z2 minus z3 minus z2. So we have derived the result that we wanted to obtain. Once again we started by applying this equation. So we knew that the complex number z1 minus z3 upon z2 minus z3 can always be represented as mod of this into e to the power iota of theta where theta was the angle between z1 minus z3 and z2 minus z3 which was pi by 2. So we could write this as e to the power iota pi by 2 into mod of z1 minus z3 mod of z2 minus z3. We knew that mod of z1 minus z3 and z2 minus z3 are equal because these two angles uh, these two lines are equal. So we got this term equals to iota. We took iota here squared it solved it and we finally derived the result which we wanted to obtain. I hope everyone is comfortable with the question. Let me know in case you have any doubt. Now 
the next topic that we are going to discuss under the locus of complex number is complex number as a rotating arrow in argon plane. I'll explain what I would what I mean by such a long term. So, for example, on this argon plane, I have a point P represented by R comma theta, which is representing a complex number Z. So I say Z equals to R into e to the power iota theta or in this case z be represented by r comma theta by the ordered pair r comma theta. So I say this length is r and this angle is theta. Now I have another point z1 which is represented by z into e to the power iota phi. I can write this z as r into e to the power iota theta. What I have here is r into e to the power iota theta into e to the power iota of phi which is equals to r of e to the power iota of theta plus phi. So what I get is this z1 is represented by a complex number of modulus r and angle theta plus phi. So when I try representing this on a complex plane, I have a point whose argument is r, this angle is phi, so whose argument is theta plus phi. This is representing z1 r comma theta plus phi. So what I observe here is when I multiply a complex number z by e to the power iota phi in anti-clockwise direction. Uh, uh, when I com multiply a complex number with e to the power iota phi, I am getting a complex number with argument theta plus phi or in other words, I am rotating this point z by an angle phi. Once again, I will speak whatever, I uh, will speak this once again. What I have done is, I am saying is when I multiply z by e to the power iota phi, I am getting a complex number whose modulus is same as r but whose angle is theta plus phi. So by multiplying z by e to the power iota phi, I am basically doing is what? I am rotating this point and um, this uh, vector z by an angle phi in anti-clockwise direction. Once again, by multiplying z by e to the power iota phi, I am basically rotating this vector z by an angle phi in anti-clockwise direction and because of this, I am getting a vector or a complex number with argument theta plus phi. So I say that multiplying z by e to the power iota phi is equivalent to rotating z by phi by angle phi in anti-clockwise direction. Similarly, multiplying z by e to the power minus iota phi is equivalent to rotating z by an angle phi in clockwise direction. I hope everyone is comfortable with the second result even I have written because when I multiply z by e to the power minus iota phi, I am getting a complex number whose argument is theta minus phi. So this is, so if this is my point complex number z having an argument theta, if I multiply this by minus phi, e to the power minus phi, I am getting a complex number here whose argument is 
theta minus pi by the modulus is same as r. So this is this is what I meant by the very long term which I introduced in the starting was that ro um, rotating a com uh, complex number as a rotating arrow in the r1 plane which simply boils down to two very important results that is if you multiply a complex number e to the power iota phi what we are doing is basically we are rotating this complex number z by an angle phi in the anti clockwise direction and if we multiply this z by e to the power minus iota phi what we are doing is we are basically rotating this complex number z by an angle phi in the clockwise direction. Let us see some one problem based upon this so that we can start to apply this one on our 